Picking the right chart can be overwhelming because there's so many options. But a flowchart makes it simple so you can pick the right chart every time. There's a lot of ways to organize and categorize charts, but I built this interactive flowchart in Tableau using an existing concept as inspiration and tweaked it to keep it simple, clear, and complete. The link's in the description and you can hover over any category or chart for explanation and examples. I also have a site organized by topics with links to my videos. Now let's dive into the flowchart. The first step is figuring out what you want to show. Are you comparing values to spot trends? Highlighting relationships between things? Breaking down a whole into its parts? Or visualizing the spread of data? Let's start with comparison, which is used to show how different values stack up against each other, whether it's over time or between categories. Imagine there's a race where you want to see how the racers stack up against each other. A bar chart is perfect for this. It quickly shows each racer's speed, making it easy to spot the winner. From a business perspective, you might want to compare which salesperson generated the most revenue. In both cases, a bar chart works well because we're comparing a single metric across simple categories. Now let's say instead of just one race, imagine we're comparing each racer's speed across two races. We can use a grouped bar chart, which groups the bars by person, showing their speed in race one and race two side by side. This makes it easy to compare individual performance across the two races. Instead of looking at individual racers, you may want to compare teams by their speed, while also seeing how gender factors in. This expands the scope, allowing us to see how each team stacks up against each other, while also breaking it down by gender. A stacked bar chart is perfect for this. Here, each bar represents a team's total speed, and the different segments within the bar are color-coded by gender. Now we can quickly compare overall team performance, as well as the speed of each gender. And you can not only compare a metric across categories, you can also track it over time to spot trends and patterns. If you're interested in a single runner's speed over time, a line chart is ideal for tracking distance continuously, showing how far they run each minute. This smooth line reveals when they slow down or speed up based on their distance. But if you want to see their total progress, like how much distance they've covered across the entire race, an area chart is a great choice. It adds up all the distance they've run over time so you can see their total progress. And the last part of the area chart represents the total distance the runner covered by the end of the race. Instead of tracking distance every minute, say we change the time period to every hour. Since an hour is a larger, more defined time period, and the race only lasts a few hours, a bar chart is a better fit. Each bar represents the total distance run in that hour making it easy to compare how much distance is covered in each time block, instead of tracking every minute or second. Comparison charts show how different values relate to each other, while relationship charts show how different factors affect each other. And I've split these into two types. Correlation charts, which show how strongly two things are connected, and flow charts, which show how something moves or changes from one point to another. If you wanted to see whether leg length affected a runner's speed, you could plot these two variables on a scatter plot to check for a relationship. But what if you also wanted to see if gender plays a role? A bubble chart can help by using different colors for gender, allowing you to separate that third variable and explore the relationship between all three factors at once. Not only can we look at the relationship between two variables, but we can also track movement between categories to better understand how things are connected. That's why I included a Sankey chart. It's incredibly useful and something I use often at work, mainly because it shows things that other charts can't. Let me break it down simply. Imagine a race where runners have trained a lot, a moderate amount, or very little. And you want to see how training affected their race results. So on the left we have the training, and on the right we have the results, with lines connecting these categories showing the number of people moving between them. So thicker lines means more people, and thinner lines means fewer. For example, a thick blue line from a lot of training to top 10% shows that many well-trained runners place in the top 10%, while a thinner line from a lot of training to did not finish means very few highly trained runners failed to complete the race. If you tried to analyze this in a table, spotting the patterns would be much harder. Even a stacked bar chart only shows totals. So only a Sankey chart visually connects where runners started with their training levels to where they finished with their race results making it easier to see movement and patterns at a glance. Comparison shows us how values stack up, 
and relationships reveal how things are connected. But we also may need to see what something is made of. And that's where composition comes in, breaking a hole into its parts to show how each piece contributes. So if you want to break down the shoes that runners are wearing by brand, you can use a pie chart. Pie charts make it easy to see the portion of each shoe brand at a glance. And since all the sections add up to 100%, you can quickly compare which brands are the most popular. A great alternative is a donut chart, which is just a pie chart with a hole in the center. The style is more modern and it has one big advantage. You can use the center space. You can add icons for each brand to make the slices instantly recognizable, or text to describe what's in the chart for more clarity. Now, if we want to see more than just a breakdown of runners by shoe brand, but also by shoe type, whether it's road, trail, or racing shoes, we can use a stacked bar chart. This chart shows each brand's overall share like a pie chart, and how that share is split by shoe type. By stacking shoe types within each brand, you can easily compare which brands are the most popular and how their shoes are used at the same time. Now imagine, instead of just looking at the shoe brands, we focus on the specific shoe models within each brand. If we use a pie chart, the number of slices become overwhelming, which makes it harder to read. So when there's a lot of categories, a tree map is a better choice. It uses rectangles sized by the number of people wearing each shoe making it easy to spot the most popular models. We can also color code rectangles by brand so we can see the brand level breakdown from the pie chart while also taking a deeper look at the individual shoes. Tree maps are great for when there are many categories and by grouping them by color, we can keep the same brand comparison we had in the pie chart, just with more detail. In these composition examples, we looked at static composition charts, meaning they showed a single moment in time without tracking changes but sometimes we wanna see how the breakdown changes over time instead of just a snapshot. For example, if we wanna see how the distribution of shoe brands in the pie chart has changed over the last three years, we can use a stacked bar chart. This chart is great for showing absolute values like the number of runners per shoe brand over time. And if we care more about proportions rather than the total numbers, we can use a 100% stacked bar chart instead. This version focuses on percentages, like the percent of runners wearing each brand per year, rather than the total number of runners. This helps us see the brand trends more clearly by showing the percentages instead of the totals. So changes in the number of runners each year don't affect the comparison. Just like in comparison charts, bar charts work best for discrete time periods like years. But when dealing with continuous time and wanting a smoother trend, liner area charts are more effective. Stacked bar charts are great for side-by-side -side yearly comparisons. But if we want to see how the breakdown changes fluidly over time, a stacked area chart is a better choice. Instead of separate bars for each year, the stacked area chart connects the data, showing trends rather than individual snapshots. Like stacked bar charts, stacked area charts can also be 100% stacked, showing percentages instead of total counts. This shows relative changes over time, making it easier to see brand popularity shifts even if the total number of runners has changed. These composition charts show us how a whole is divided into parts. Whether we're using a pie chart for a snapshot, stacked bars for comparison, or stacked areas for trends, they help us visualize how elements fit into the bigger picture. And the final category is distribution charts, which show us how the data spread out, helping us see patterns, clusters, and outliers in a data set. If we want to track one variable like the runner's finish times, we can use a histogram. This works like a bar chart, but instead of individual values, it groups finish times into bins, which are time intervals. And the height of each bar shows how many runners finished within that range. This is a distribution chart because it reveals how finish times are spread out. And we can see patterns like a peak in the middle where most runners finish, and fewer runners finishing very slow or very fast, which is expected. This helps us understand the overall distribution of finish times rather than just individual results. If we want to look at the distribution of two variables, we can use a scatter plot. We also saw scatter plots in relationship charts, and that's because they have multiple uses. In the relationship scatter plot, we looked at whether leg length was connected to a runner's speed. So we could see if these two variables move together. But if we simply want to look at how leg length is distributed across different heights, we can use a scatter plot as a distribution chart. This lets us spot clusters like where most runners fall, and outliers which stand out from the general pattern and don't fit within the typical range. So we're not investigating if there's a relationship between these two variables. 
just looking at the spread of height by leg length. And that covers the four main chart categories, comparison, relationship, composition, and distribution, along with the different chart types you might use for each. Choosing the right chart can make your data more clear and impactful. This flowchart simplifies the process, helping you quickly decide which chart best fits your data.